This morning, MTS passengers in the South Bay and East County should plan for service disruptions to some bus services. That's because drivers contracted by a third party group are on strike. Thanks for being here at 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Netta Iram. Yeah, got many of them up early picketing right now. CBS 8's Chris Grow live in Chula Vista now to explain how this will impact your morning commute. And you see that line of people behind you, Chris. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. Let's take a live look here at that picket line. You can see right here in front of the MTS station here in the South Bay. Many of them adjourned in their uh, yellow and highlight vests. You can see them right there, right in front of the entrance and exit of the MTS station here. Now, these are workers, again, the drivers that are either with First Transit or Transdev and both operate as a third party for uh, bus, bus operators, I should say, in the South Bay and East County. Now, this strike is going to impact bus routes as well as pair transit riders and a limited number of fixed route services that use mini buses. And the drivers that are on the picket line, they're pushing for better wages and working conditions from Transdev and First Transit. Now, MTS has outlined how many routes and which ones are expected to be impacted. In fact, they tweeted, quote, Please plan for major service disruptions to bus service effective immediately. Expect limited to no service on routes operating out of our South Bay bus division due to a work stoppage. In fact, the union rep told us yesterday that the strike could last as long as 20 days. But back out here live, this picket strike, excuse me, the picket line going strong as this strike continues. In fact, at one point, uh, we heard a union rep asking them for uh, bodies to go down to the Otai station as well, too. So again, they are making their voices heard. Uh, it is important to point out that MTS does not have any type of uh, decision making within this process. Again, this is between the workers and their third party employers, that being either uh, First Transit or Transdev. But for more information on those routes that could be impacted, you can go to CBS8.com and click on that story link. Eric and Netta. Well, this morning, teachers and staff at San Diego Unified demanding a living wage and better work conditions. You see hundreds of them protesting outside district headquarters. This video is from yesterday. They've been working without a new contract since June of last year. And while negotiations are ongoing, they're threatening to declare an impasse if an agreement is not reached by the end of this month. We don't want to go to strike, but if I have to, I did it before, I can do it again. So now you see part of a statement the district gave to us. They say they continue to work with the union on a contract that, quote, honors the work of our teachers and staff and recognizes their dedication to educate and support students and help them recover from the effects of the pandemic. This morning, some parents are upset over discipline policies at San Diego Unified. They brought their concerns to the school board for the second time last night. Parents are saying the restorative discipline policy allows students to behave badly without consequences. The policy relies on counseling or mediation before suspension or expulsion. So one parent says a child in his son's class has continued to assault and threaten other students. Bringing a gun to school, a fully loaded BB gun that resembles a Glock, and I actually have one to show. Uh, taking um, a, a pencil sharpener apart, taking the blade, threatening to cut kids. So we asked the school district if they're going to make any changes to this policy. They only told us they're continuously looking into their procedures. This morning, we still don't know the cause of an explosion at a Tijuana apartment building just three miles from the border. It happened yesterday morning, leaving 28 people injured, four of them seriously injured. Right now, crews have blocked off the area. They're monitoring the entire block in case of a gas leak or anything else that could trigger another blow. Civil protection officials say another kind of explosion happened at the building a few years ago, and the apartments on top were not supposed to be livable. And now new this morning, Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes may finally have to leave a beachfront property here in Del Mar and report to prison. So a court just rejected her latest effort to overturn her conviction. Holmes scammed investors and the government out of hundreds of millions of dollars with her blood testing startup. Well, she's been delaying the start of her 11 year sentence and has been staying here in San Diego, specifically that Del Mar beachfront home. A judge will now set a date for her to go to prison. And now this morning, the president and congressional leaders honing in on a possible agreement on the debt limit. This includes taking back some unspent federal COVID relief money. 
than adding stricter work requirements to social safety net programs. If an agreement is not reached in 15 days, the country could default on its debt. So June 1st is that deadline. The Treasury Secretary saying it could be a financial catastrophe, the likes of the Great Recession. But in a cable news interview this morning, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was optimistic that the U.S. will not default. Well, this morning, soccer fans have mixed reactions to the possibility of an MLS team in San Diego. You have Major League Soccer coming here. Tomorrow, the commissioner of Major League Soccer will be holding a press conference event at Snapdragon Stadium to make a, quote, significant announcement about the future of soccer in San Diego. Egyptian billionaire Mohamed Mansour will be there as well. He's expected to be the investment partner and owner alongside the Sequan tribe. If they confirm a team in San Diego, we would be home to the 30th club in the MLS and will begin play in 2025. Ooh. So fans are wondering what, what's going to happen to the Loyal if and when an MLS team arrives. In a recent statement, the Loyal said, quote, we have become aware of an independent ownership group that intends to launch their own club in San Diego. Our unwavering commitment is to the vision of growing soccer in this city. They go on to say, quote, our plan is simple. We aren't going anywhere. So here is what some of our viewers are saying on our Facebook page. Some of the comments we've been getting in. Jericho says we ready in San Diego and as mayor I approve of this. <laughs> okay. Adolfo writes finally they say something good they took chargers away hopefully we get a good soccer team here in San Diego time for a change. Diane says don't really care we let the chargers go not getting attached to another team. No. Still hurt no, from still, the uh, chargers debacle. Should we talk about that. Diane's commitment issues or <laughs> yeah. are we just gonna. She's been burned I once. Think, yes. She doesn't want to get burned the again. The frustrations. Not again. again. Yeah. Yeah. Well I'm excited. Can with we her. obviously yeah. don't know what the announcement will be but we have some people some inferring clues. what yes. that's going to mean. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, for those players who get to play on a San Diego team. Yeah. Lucky that. Well, I think right. the more more <laughs> pro sports we have in San Diego, the better. Yeah. I agree. Because maybe a football like, and a hockey I mean, team and lacrosse Snap team. Snapdragon is maybe. brand maybe new. Yeah. It's beautiful. What a great place to enjoy all those sports. Yeah. So, yeah. going to be cool. Uh, let's take a look at your forecast for your Wednesday morning, starting off the week with cloud cover. And in some cases, those clouds are pretty low down to the ground. Take a look at uh, fog we're running into in Ramona. We're at less than a quarter mile of visibility along the coastline. We're doing all right. Five miles in Miramar and Kearney Mesa, six miles of visibility in Carlsbad. We're up to half a mile in Fall Brook, so still running into some trouble, especially off toward our valley floors. What we're going to see by the afternoon is that those clouds are going to pull back and weaken. We'll still run into quite a bit of haze along the coast and passing clouds. And because of that dense cloud cover, lingering through the afternoon. We probably will still stick with mid 60s as opposed to warmer than average temperatures. So cooler than average for the coast, but warmer than average for your inland valleys, for your mountains and your deserts. We have a whole nother issue to contend with, though, starting from today all the way through the weekend, and that's going to be higher humidity. So you'll feel a bit of mugginess out there, especially inland and across the mountains. Across the mountains, that will translate to the chance of a few thunderstorms developing. So Right now, walking out the door, we're mainly in the 50s, 59 degrees in Oceanside, 58 in Del Mar, 54 in Ramona. But as the mountains warm up later on this afternoon and we see instability start to climb, it can draw on that moisture, that easterly flow, right? Monsoonal moisture, as we call it. Uh, and that moisture is going to allow for, allow for cloud development and that chance of a few straight uh, showers and maybe even thunderstorms. That chance for showers remains elevated all the way through about Sunday, maybe even Monday, and then we'll start to see things dwindle a bit as onshore flow prevails. But the setup right now is consistent with the possibility, about 5 to 10, maybe 20% chance of a, a few stray showers making their way across the mountaintops exclusively. It's 6.09 right now, now for traffic. Here's a look at the border wait times from the CBP website. It is a 160-minute wait for the general line at the San Ysidro Port of Entry and an 80-minute wait for the general line at the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. You can head to our website, cbsa.com traffic. It'll let you know what those road conditions look like here across our county. Back to you.